A pleasant day class! Welcome to Horticulture Module for Grade 10. This focuses on Quarter 1, Week 3 discussion. So let's get started. Let's begin with the types of planting materials, preferably propagules. Propagules is a vegetative structure that can become detached from a plant and give rise to a new plant. Plant propagation is the process which grows new plants from a variety of sources like from seeds, cuttings, and other plant parts for intentional production of new plants using various starter materials, for example, organs or tissues, including their intensive but temporary care. It is primarily practiced to produce seedlings or clones of nursery crops for outplanting or for planting in containers for display or decor or other uses. Nursery crops are those which commonly require the use of pre-grown planting materials for outplanting or field planting. A plant nursery is a place where seedlings, clones, and potted plants are raised temporarily under intensive care. There are two types of propagation, the sexual propagation and the asexual propagation. So let's try to differentiate each type of propagation. Let's go with sexual propagation. Sexual reproduction is the union of the pollen and egg, drawing from the genes of two parents to create a new third individual. Sexual propagation involves the floral parts of a plant. Seeds are typically produced from sexual propagation within a species because genetic combination has occurred. One of the methods of plant propagation is a propagation by seed. The use of seed is the most practical and even the cheapest way of propagation. There are advantages of using seeds. First, most practical and cheapest way. Cheapest because it is the offspring of the plant. It is there already and it can be as many as possible. Second, stronger anchorage for fruit trees grown from seeds which makes the trees resistant to strong winds. It has a better resistant because it grows naturally, its development comes from its seed stage down to its maturity. There are also disadvantages of using seeds. First, fruit trees take a longer time to bear fruits. If we will use seed propagation, we will going to wait for the trees to bear fruit. From that fruit, we can collect another seeds to propagate and grow for another trees. Second, the resulting plants does not retain the characteristics of the parents because of gene segregation. Since seeds produce sexually, it can inherit a gene combination of its parents. Therefore, another characteristics may occur, most likely in human genetics. And Plants tend to grow into larger trees. In a seed propagation, germination test is very important. It is one way of assessing the viability of the seed by performing germination test. Viability is the ability of the seed to survive or live successfully. Germination is the resumption of active embryo growth after a dormant Period. There are three conditions that must be satisfied for a seed to germinate. First, the seed must be viable, that is, the embryo must be alive and capable of germination. We have to see to it that the embryo are capable to progress or develop over time. Number two, internal conditions of the seed must be favorable for the germination. The physical state of the embryo should be taken care of. We have to remove all the impediments in the body of the embryo that may hinder the growth. Number three, the seed must be subjected to appropriate environmental conditions. The seedling should have a good condition place. 
Taking into consideration are the temperature, oxygen, and other species present like grass that may grab the nutrients and the lightings which is also important in the growing plants. To stimulate seed germination, this process can be done. It is a seed scarification from the word scars. The seed will not germinate until the seed coat is altered physically. Any process of breaking, scratching, or mechanically altering the seed coat to make it permeable to water and gases is known as scarification. Please watch a short video clip of the processes of seed scarification. Credits to the owners! Hi, I'm Farm to Table Chef Tekka Thompson and today we're talking about how to soak seeds before planting. So the benefits of soaking your seeds before planting them is that the seeds can absorb as much water in 24 hours being soaked as they can an entire week being directly in the ground. So this will give the germination process a uh, much speedier time and then your vegetables will ripen sooner. So I'm just going to take my seeds and I've got a little just glass bowl here. And I'm going to pour the seeds to the bottom of the bowl, pretty much covering it. And then in this pitcher right here, all I have is lukewarm water. You don't want it too hot because it can shock the seeds in not a good way. So we're just going to do lukewarm. And we're going to pour the water over the seeds about three, two and a half, three inches of water. Just like this. And voila. So the seeds will soak for about 24 hours, sometimes 48, depending on the seeds. And how you can tell they've been soaked is that they'll lighten a few shades in color and they'll become plump and round, uh, larger in size and also softer to the touch. And then after soaking your seeds for 24 to 48 hours, you can plant them in the ground and the faster they'll germinate and the faster you can harvest. I'm farm to table chef Tekka Thompson. That is how to soak seeds before planting. Thank you for watching. Scarification is the process of weakening the seed coat so that air and water can enter the seed more quickly, thereby speeding up germination. This pretreatment is only required for seed that has a tough seed coat. In this video, I'll show you several ways to scarify seed and show you how to remove the tails from seed like clematis. I'll also show you how to avoid damaging the seed embryo while scarifying. This is important because a damaged embryo will not germinate. A file works well for large seed. You can use a triangular file or a regular flat file. If you're using a flat file, Pull it at an angle so that the corner is making a V-shaped cut in the seed. You can put the seed on the table and run the file over it like this. But I find it easier to rest the file on the table and run the seed over the file. This way round seed is less likely to go shooting across the room. You want the groove to be deep enough so that you can see the white inner seed, but you don't want to damage the inner part. This walnut is really hard and needs some more filing, but I'll do that later. You get the idea. For mid-sized seed, nail clippers work quite well. Use them to clip off a small amount of the seed coat so that you can see the inner part of the seed. You can also use a utility knife or an exacto knife. Take a sheet of sandpaper and lay it flat on the table. Place the seed on top. Now take a smaller piece of sandpaper and cover the seed. Gently slide the top sheet back and forth. 
After a couple of passes, you might need to move the seed back into a pile so you can scratch them some more. With small seed, I don't try to scratch them enough to see the inside of the seed. Their seed coat is not very thick and some minor scratches on the surface will usually do the trick. Let's have a look at some seed embryos. These are peanut seeds that have been split open. You can clearly see the embryo inside the red circle. Think of the embryo as a baby plant. It is usually small and located at the end of the seed that was attached to the mother plant. Here is a close up of the embryo. The rest of the seed is stored food that the baby plant will use when it grows. If you damage the embryo while scarifying, it will die and there will be no germination. So it is important to know which side of the seed to scarify. Our problem is that we can't open the seed to find the embryo. We need to know its location by looking at the outside of the seed. Here are some seeds that clearly show the location of the embryo. It is the white scar inside the black area. The scar is the point where the seed was attached to the mother plant. To scarify these seeds, stay away from the scar. Here are some sunflower seeds. This one is not as obvious. You might think the round end has the embryo, but when we look inside the seed, you can see the embryo at the pointed end. Here is a nice collection of seed. I'll look at these and use arrows to point to the one I'm talking about. This seed has a very obvious scar, and that will be the point where the embryo is located. The second seed has a point at the bottom, and again, that's the position of the embryo. So when you scarify, you want to scarify the round end. This large seed in the center has a little indentation indicating the presence of the embryo. This little seed over here also has an indentation making the embryo quite obvious. But now let's have a look at some seeds where it's not so obvious. This white seed is completely round, doesn't have any indentations and no points, and it's really not clear where the embryo is. The same with this last seed. I would have no idea where the embryo is. On seed like this, I try to scarify in different spots in the hopes that some of the seed will germinate. As long as I don't damage the embryo and all the seeds, I should have germination for this plant. Thank you for watching this video. Another type of propagation is the asexual propagation. It is sometimes referred to as vegetative propagation. Involves taking vegetative parts of a plant like stems, roots, and leaves, causing them to regenerate into a new plant, or in some cases, several plants. With few exceptions, the resulting plant is genetically identical to the parent plant. Now, let's go to the advantages of vegetative propagation. First, they produce true to type. As mentioned earlier, it can produce a propagated plant that is very identical to parent plant. Number two, suitable for plant species that do not normally produce seeds or may also produce seeds but are difficult to germinate. To be able to propagate those species without seed and those that is difficult to propagate, vegetative propagation is used. Number three, trees are smaller compared to those propagated by seeds. An asexual propagation fruit tree will flower immediately. This early flowering results in a smaller trees. Number four, highly useful for species with distinct maleness and femaleness. According to research, due to the great genetic diversity of rambutan plants, it is recommended to use vegetative propagation. Now, let's proceed to the kinds of vegetative propagules. First is the runners. These are specialized growing stem parts that arise from leaf axils of the plant and form roots of their own 
that render them excellent propagating materials like strawberry and black pepper. This is an illustration of how runners serves as vegetative propagules and do the propagation. Next is the suckers. Suckers are adventitious roots that arise from underground stems below the ground. This is an illustration of how suckers became a vegetative propagules and propagate. Next is the corms. Corms is underground solid stem structure that contains nodes and internodes. The corm can be further divided into several seed pieces. This is an illustration of how corms propagates. Root cuttings. Root cuttings of some species produce new shoots which then form their own root system. Whereas, root cuttings of other plants develop root system before producing new shoots. Example, raspberry and blackberry as well as rose. This is an illustration of how root cuttings propagate. Stem cuttings are the most commonly used methods of vegetative propagation. It is a plant stem including a tip, like shoot, twig, or sucker, or a portion of a stem without the apex that includes one or more nodes removed from a parent plant and capable of rooting. This is how stem cuttings propagates. Another is leaf bud cutting. These are derived from axillary buds in stem and leaf. The stem bearing buds are cut into pieces and inserted in a rooting medium. Illustration shows a golden pothos. This is an illustration of how leaf bud cutting propagates. Next is a slips. It is a leafy shoot that arise from axillary buds produced at the base of a plant. Example is a sweet potato slips. This is how slips propagates. So now let's proceed to the practices and operations in the nursery. First, Preparation Use and maintenance of germination or rooting beds to be used only for germinating seeds or rooting of cuttings. Second, Patting or the transfer of young seedlings to individual containers like thick black plastic bags in various sizes. The size of plastic bag varies with the size of the seeds. Third is the care and maintenance of seedlings ready for transplanting. Normally, seedlings are ready for transplanting when they attained around 30 cm in height and at least 3 to 4 mature leaves, but this can vary with various species. Fourth, management of light or the solar energy in the nursery. Some form of shade is needed by some seedlings while in the early stage of growth and development and also those that are in rooting beds. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day! It is indeed a fruitful session for plantitos and plantitas. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell for you to become updated in my upcoming videos. God bless everyone!